Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union. What's happening with human rights around the world on ThinkTech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii and Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper. And the title of today's episode is Pleas for Leonard Peltier's Freedom Persist, the case raised at the UN and the US Senate. Today, I'm fortunate to be joined by three amazing activists and advocates working for the freedom of Leonard Peltier. And I want to first go to Jean Roach. Jean, thank you so much for joining us. We know you're the co-director of the International Leonard Peltier Defense Committee. Could you share with us who is Leonard Peltier? Yes, Leonard Peltier has been in prison for 47 years. And basically, he's um, stood up for the people in many ways. One of the ways is that um, he was wrongly convicted for the deaths of two FBI agents in Ogallala, South Dakota. And also we always fail to mention that uh, Joe Stunt was also killed there. He was a native man from uh, Washington state. But he, he Leonard represents um, indigenous people's fight. And we've been fighting this government and uh, people for a very long time. We've uh, faced uh, many um, years of colonization and one of the things that we that we're trying to do now is get Leonard Peltier free, and a lot of it's based on lies, total lies, and um, the colonized stereotypes of Indians. You know, all the things that Leonard represents is all the things that are ha that are happening to our people. Okay, the lies and the manipulation, and the very fact that the federal government, the FBI, will not admit they're wrong and how they coerced so many people during his trial. I mean, on day one, they went to Canada and they lied to the Canadian government, the United States government, just to get him returned here. And they based that on the affidavit done by Myrtle Forbear. And she was forced to, these, to do these affidavits, but Canada would not um, extradite him without an eyewitness. That was the reason to bring her. And basically, they told everybody that that was his girlfriend. And we're like, who is this woman? We've never, ever seen her before. I mean, it was just an all right lie. So that's the way it all began. But it really began, you know, our, our political prisoners started way back at contact. We have Crazy Horse that was also thrown in jail, Sitting Bull. I mean, our history repeats. And Leonard is one of the historical figures right now that we are trying to free that have, has been railroaded you know so uh, all the things that leonard represents is all the or fight that we have today with our people and this all happened in oglala south dakota um basically the fbi came down there and did not even um recognize its own law broke many laws just to be down here so it's a continual fight to get leonard out as a political prisoner and one of the things I do know is that uh, I would, I'm a survivor of the firefight and he protected us. And the things that we were doing in the community were basically organizing a community to be self-sufficient. I mean, we planted gardens. Most of us there were under the age of 17, 18. So we were never charged, people that were charged with the adult. And you have a bunch of kids that got away from the FBI. And I think that doesn't make them show face very good. But, you know, good thing we were young. We could run up those hills fast. But I'm here now in the Guala area. I'm at Red Claw Renewable Energy, which is near where the firefight happened. And every day, you know, I drive by there and I remember that day. You know, I was 15 years old, 14 years old, actually. My brother was 10 and he didn't, that didn't save him from being shot at. So, you know, it doesn't matter. When they want something, they break any law. And to date, we know that they break any law to keep him in there. So the story has been a long one and 47 years is way too long when the evidence, uh, we have uh, evidence and we have judges, we have senators, we have Congress people that can read and understand what the constitution stands for. So basically, you know, honor your own laws, honor our treaties. I mean, we have a long list of things that need to be made right with our indigenous nations. And Leonard Peltier's release is one of them. Um, Leonard's family, he hasn't been able to spend any time with his grandchildren. I'm a grandmother now. I can't even imagine since I was the age of 16, he's been in prison. So um, 
when um, when it comes down to it, there's not going to be any peace or any type of progress how this case has been addressed. And everything that we talk about, we have documentation for it. I don't know why he's not released, but you know, the people have should have more power than a few politicians that want to hide their scars of how they uh, attack people. Jean, thank you so alive. much. Jean, thank you so much for that historical perspective, bringing it back to colonization, but then also your firsthand account of surviving as well as a teenager. And we'll come back to you, Lenny. Foster, it's so good to see you again. I know we've seen each other at the Universal Periodic Review and also at the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. We know you serve as a spiritual advisor for Leonard Peltier, but also for more than 2,000 incarcerated Native Americans and 96 state and federal prisons. Thank you for joining us. And, and who is Leonard Peltier to you? I've known uh, Leonard Peltier for uh, over 50 years. I met him in Denver, Colorado in 1970. I became acquainted with him because we were both young, joined the American Indian movement, and we were both idealistic, uh, working for our uh, people's struggles, uh, treaty rights and human rights for indigenous people and treaty rights for our Indian people. He's uh, a citizen of the uh, Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewas, and I believe he's 77 years old. He's uh, four years older than me. And I've known him um, in the prison system when I first met him in uh, USP uh, Leavenworth, 1985. And I visited him for 20 years at uh, Leavenworth Federal Prison, which is a maximum security prison. And my uh, responsibilities uh, for him was to provide him with spiritual support, uh, engage in a cleansing and purification ceremony known as a sweat lodge. Uh, we, we prayed with the, uh, the Chanupa, the pipe. So that, that's how I got to know him. And I know him to be a, a, a reverent elder. And he's become uh, as such because of the long um, time of incarceration. He's a, a very talented painter, artist, and he's a very uh, sincere uh, human being. And I, I believe it's, it's time he is uh, released and be allowed to go home to uh, uh, Turtle Mountain and enjoy his remaining years with his family, his uh, grandchildren, great grandchildren. And it's only befitting and right that uh, we we uh, uh, work on his behalf to to do that. We we don't leave any uh, brother behind on the battlefield, so we need to get him out of the the federal bureau of prison. So that's uh, uh, one one aspect of him that I know, but I also want to share that I sun danced with him at uh, Crow Dogs Paradise in Rosebud, South Dakota, 1975. And shortly thereafter, uh, he was uh, captured in uh, Canada. And then he sent word out that he wanted me to uh, come and visit him and provide him with the sweat lot ceremonies and uh, pray with a pipe with him. So I, I did that. At that time, there was a David Chief and Archie Fire were, were his uh, uh, spiritual advisors. And I uh, joined that group from Arizona. I'm a Dene. She Kian, Ain Shan, Sestrani, Bashishin, Tobai, Dashache, Enagan, Edashanal, Ewada, Nabi Hun, Shido, Tseho, Tseho, Yedo, Ado, Yesenasha, Ado, D. Lenny Peltier, or Yegishin, Nayat L. Deep a warrior, what's out of an ashtar de a good ah, touche nail in, don't or set your in. So I'm um, explaining my clan, the Tarnhouse clan, born for Mount Cove, and my uh, maternal grandparents are River Edge, and my paternal grandparents are one who walks around. So that that's uh, who I am as a Dene citizen. 
And I've known uh, Leonard Peltier since 1970. I know him through the uh, Sundance. And I think that's something that's very important because that's one of the ancient old ceremonial practices of the, the Great Plains people. And the Sundance was brought to the Southwest by uh, uh, our elder Leonard Crowdog in 19, 1979, 1980. And we, we've been uh, Sundancing in the Southwest ever since. So that's that's how I know Leonard Peltier. And like I said, I used to visit him every quarter at the United States Penitentiary uh, Leavenworth. And we did our uh, sweat lodge ceremonies. And he was one of 85 uh, prisoners, native prisoners at, the, at that facility. So we, we became acquainted and became uh, good friends through those years. Now he's at the, uh, USP Coleman, Florida, and I have the opportunity to visit him, but only in the in the visiting room. The warden uh, prohibited me from participating in the sweat lodge with him out out at the sweat lodge area, and I objected. And I asked him why. He said we don't let friends or relatives come into the prison to do ceremonies with their relatives, and it's come to my attention that you and him our uh, friends. I said, how can I not be his friend? I've known him for 52 years, but it, that, that wasn't enough for him to change his, his, uh, his order. So I, I can only visit him uh, at the visiting room, but someday soon we'll, we'll be uh, uh, engaging in the sweat lot ceremony again together and praying with the pipe. And um, like I said, he's a very, uh, reverent he's a very uh, humane person very talented very friendly he had a, a real sense of uh, uh, humor about him and he's a uh, very well read very uh, self-taught uh, he keeps up with things uh, out here in the free world so that that's how i know him to to answer your question thank you so much lenny and it is true even pope francis and the dalai lama protests his imprisonment and requests his immediate release. And just last week, our next speaker, Representative Ruth Buffalo, was able to bring his case forward to the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues at the 21st session. Representative Buffalo, could you share with us a bit who is Leonard Peltier to you and the amazing work that you're doing? Um, hello, good people. Um, my name is Woman Appears. I'm uh, dialing in from the stolen lands of the Dakota and Anishinaabe people within the what is uh, present day Red River Valley here in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, it's an honor to be here with you and to have shared um, the words for Leonard Peltier on behalf of the, the international Leonard uh, Peltier Defense Committee. Uh, what who Leonard Peltier is to me, um, it, he represents and is a constant reminder of the injustice that we continue to face here within our own homelands of what is present day United States of America. Um, many of us know all too well, unfortunately, the uh, overrepresentation of Native Americans within every level of criminal justice system, you know, from juvenile justice system to county jails, city jails, state prisons, federal prisons. Um, and so it's it times up, you know, we need him back in our homelands uh, with his present day North Dakota. Um, I'm, I'm a citizen of the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Nation, and uh, we just need to get him out of there. We, there's too many stories of loved ones um, that we know of who have been incarcerated, um, who have been denied compassionate release. Um, and so this is really a sense of urgency and we need Leonard free. Um, we know that we none of us are free until Leonard is free. And so as uh, state legislators, we have helped with different efforts in mobilizing the communities and calling uh, for his release um, at Let's see, end of October, about 24 Native state uh, legislators issued a letter to Biden calling for his release. Um, we've also had the National Caucus of State 
uh, legislators uh, who are Native American also issue a letter and a resolution to Biden calling for Leonard's release. Um, and also the DNC Native Caucus has also followed suit. Um, even the North Dakota Democratic Nonpartisan League has issued a statement um, calling for Leonard's release. And so we're, we're trying to help where we can with within our reach. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to talk to Leonard a handful of times, and he's very, very uh, upbeat and very, you can tell he's a very kind hearted person. Um, and we just need to get him out of there. We need him to walk out of there um, and to return to his homelands here in North Dakota, um, back to his family, his friends, you know, within the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa of Indians uh, Reservation, the homelands here. Um, and, you know, I was born in 1977 and he's currently 77 years old. So um, we talk about, you know, his experience in boarding school and all of the injustices surrounding that. And so Leonard to me is, you know, somebody that needs to be released. You know, he is our Nelson Mandela and none of us are free until Leonard's free. Um, that's who Leonard is to me. Thank you so much. And it also brings up not only were you speaking at the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues at the UN headquarters in New York, but also just last week, Senator Brian Schatz, who's the chair of the Senate Indian Affairs Committee, pressed Attorney General Merrick Garland on the status of Peltier's clemency petition as Garland testified in an unrelated Senate budget hearing. So it is good that the world is aware. Jean, do you wanna share with us why this case is so important in the US, but also around the world? This case basically, like I said earlier, it represents uh, an attitude that the United States government has had against native nations. Okay, we have many treaties. We're here from the uh, Lakota nation. So our trees have not been honored. Our land has been stolen. I mean, Leonard represents every bit of that, you know, uh, his treatment and how he's being treated. So there's just so many connections and so many ways that, you know, his treatment is related to the way our nations have, have been treated, basically. So um, I think that one of the things that we can do is educate ourselves or education uh, of or past historical uh, treatment has been lost at some point. We don't teach it in our schools. Um, they don't tell about the things that are going on, the unjust. I mean, he represents everything about the judicial system that is going on to native people. And we have people going to prison that the average non-native won't even do time for. But because we have a racist system, I live in Rapid City, which is one of the most, um, we call it the deep north. And we have people in prison, uh, you know, for we have one of the only laws in uh, our state where somebody can go to prison for having uh, drugs in your pee. You know, it's just outrageous. We have a lot of people we prefer treatment, not the penal system. So there's so many um, attacks on our people and Leonard just represents an overall of so many of these unjust attacks, the bias system. I mean, we don't have access, access to buy justice is what the bottom line is. We don't have the money to bail our people out, you know, so there's a difference there um, between the treatment of us and them. Thank you so much, Jean. And it reminds me of a quote of Peltier. He said, we need to do more than just what is right. We need to join together and right what is wrong. And I think the work that you've been doing this entire time leads towards that. Lenny, can you share with us why this case is so important and matters so much to the world? No, um, Leonard uh, represents the resistance of the indigenous people, the Indian people. And we were never taught our uh, true history, the culture, the languages, and the schools and upbringing. Uh, everything that was taught was uh, basically uh, distorted or outright law. And then when we start to question some of that, we, we become uh, uh, an enemy. And, and uh, throughout our, our lives, where uh, Indian people are targeted, once we leave the reservation, go into the border towns, uh, 
into the cities. So it becomes a, to be a target, it becomes a, a, a very difficult life to exist under a double standard of society. And with, with that, it's uh, very difficult uh, to, uh, to basically exist and make a living. And, and um, you know, the uh, laws are written where we're uh, basically uh, targeted. And, and um, you know, it becomes a very difficult uh, uh, existence in, in this society. And, and to go uh, to other uh, places where uh, basically still our land, but uh, you, you don't have any uh, uh, native or indigenous people there, except maybe in, in, the, in the barrios or the ghetto or uh, places where uh, they're not able to enjoy their uh, existence as a human being. So it, it's... It, it's a very uh, difficult, uh, it has become difficult, and we were uh, uh, brought to a point where we, we uh, resisted. And then to be a resistor, you're targeted. And, and uh, that, that's uh, one reason the, uh, the movement in the prisons brought about uh, the American Indian movement uh, in the upper Midwest in uh, Minnesota and uh, places like that. And it grew and it became basically a threat to, to the uh, FBI. And I, I uh, participated in the uh, Trail of Broken Treaties caravan where we ended up taking over the BIA building in 1972. I was at Wounded Knee uh, for the whole 71 days and engaging in some very intense firefights then I realized the seriousness of uh, standing up for your treaties, your rights as a uh, Indian person, uh, human rights for indigenous people, for Indian people, and just honoring or uh, seeking the full compliance and the enforcement of the treaties, because almost every one of these uh, agreements have been broken. And to question it, you become a threat. And so that, that was my experience uh, when I left the Naval Reservation to go to school. And I, I was up in um, uh, Pasco. I was in the Colorado State in Fort Collins. That's how I ended up joining the American Indian Movement in Denver, Colorado, under the late Vernon Balcourt. And he introduced me to Dennis Banks and Clyde Balcourt. And uh, as I mentioned, I met uh, Leonard Peltier. And, uh, I met uh, Bill Means and Russell Means and Ted Means and people like that. And also the women who were uh, the backbone of this struggle. So it was a good uh, uh, experience for me. And, and this uh, movement spread throughout the whole country. And we were a part of that. Leonard Peltier was part of the, the movement with the Northwest Group. And I was with the uh, Denver American Indian Movement. So it was a it was a beautiful experience. Then going through the Sundance, uh, it made us uh, very uh, confident in, in ourselves. And then the more uh, uh, learning and educating ourselves about the, the treaties and the mistreatment of our people uh, resulted in being a a, a real warrior. And, and uh, that, that whole experience many of us went through, and that was my, my uh, experience with uh, Leonard Peltier because I met him and then he was with a different uh, chapter and I was with a different chapter, but we, we all um, ended up doing the same thing. And I applaud uh, our sister there for uh, being in the uh, legislative uh, uh, process and that that's a, that's a difficult one. Uh, I, I know some uh, about the legislative process because I had some bills introduced in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah to protect religious rights and religious freedom for Native Americans in the prison system. And, and uh, Mahalo, Lenny, for that lifetime of liberation. And as you mentioned, Representative Ruth, maybe we'll move to her briefly. 
just for her to share why this case was so important and what was the impact from what she shared last week at the permanent forum. And I, I remember hearing the words of that Leonard recently said, if I'm not guilty of the shooting, I'm not guilty. I'd like to go home to spend what years I have left with my great grandkids and my people. And that was really what you shared last week. Representative Ruth. Uh, sure, uh, um, thank you, Lenny and Jean, you know, for all of the work that you've done. Um, it's, it, it's sad that we have to continue to fight every day, you know, and just think of how much that impacts your daily health, you know, because that is stress, that's, that's chronic stress. And so just hope that you're taking good care of yourselves because we need you here for many more years to come. Um, and yeah, I, you know, thankful to have been able to say a few words at the UN, um, the listening session via Zoom. Um, and it's the work that um, Lenny and Jean are doing. It's so important for all of us because, you know, it has to stop. It has to stop. When do things change? When are we going to have the real change that we need? Um, families deserve to be together, uh, especially the first peoples of these lands. And it, it raises the question, you know, why are we not held in high regard within our own homelands? Why why do we have our, our elder, you know, behind bars today? And so I see so many injustices and, and you know, it's... Um, it's terrible and it needs to stop. And so we hope that by Biden releasing Leonard, it'll bring a renewed hope for the first peoples of these lands that we too uh, have a right to the American dream that that is so often spoken by the founders of our country, but we deserve true justice, period. Um, and we don't have justice right now, not until Lenny Leonard is free. So I um, just wanna say Madzigirads, thank you for allowing me to share a few words. Thank you. I know we only have a couple moments left. Jean, would you like to share? What's the state of Leonard Peltier's case and why we believe now with President Biden that we might turn a page going forward? Uh, yeah, there's always hope that one of the presidents will um, actually acknowledge his own constitution. And one of the things that uh, I don't know that's been holding it back is we know that his um, Leonard's applications for clemency have been held back. And we know it's the FBI. and um, if they want change and they want um, to make some great changes, I mean, he's already made some good changes, putting Deb Halvin in as you know the Secretary of Interior. There's a lot of good changes. Now, releasing Leonard Peltier would actually show that um, you know there's some there there is somebody that has some real um, belief in our in the United States constitutional system. Now they disacknowledge it. They make their own laws to cover their own track, which is not the so-called American way. So let's live with reality and not really um, uh, expect that uh, Leonard's just going to stay in there because they ignore that part of our constitutional end or, um, or human rights. I mean, there's human rights being violated here still. And, you know, when we go back to the massacre days, when the um, people were given medals, I mean, that is so ugly that you get medals to massacre unarmed people. We're still in that state right now with Leonard Peltier and the Oglala firefight. People were killed there. They were never acknowledged, but because two FBI just got killed now, they want to they wanna keep him in there forever. But that's not nothing to the massacres that our people have felt over the generations. Thank you so much, Jean. Right. And that brings us to where we are. I, I know we're on the final moment. I remember one quote from Leonard Feltier that sort of shows the wisdom that Lenny was sharing. He said, I don't know how to save the world. I don't have the answers or the answer. I hold no secret knowledge as how to fix the mistakes of generations past and present. I only know that without compassion and respect for all of Earth's inhabitants, None of us will survive, nor will we deserve to. And that really brings up his wisdom with the climate crisis, the health crisis. And I thank all of you for joining us here on Cooper Union. And I think we definitely should have a second show looking at what will happen when, of course, Lenny, you're there in the sweat lodge with him and pointing out how we've been able to turn a page and move forward. Thank all three of you for all the work that you have done in the past and continue doing every day. And I echo what Representative Ruth Buffalo said of take care of yourselves. 
because we're all needed to keep going forward. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.